Hello, hackers. What the heck is going on? I just want to make a quick announcement that the hack project is now on GitHub and is open source under the GPL 3.0 license. This project is not complete yet, but you can now track the progress of it on GitHub. Link in the description below. Now, why do I want to put the hack on GitHub? Well, first of all, I want to make the hack open source hardware since day one. And that's because a personal pet peeve of mine is that the Commander X16, aka my favorite retro computer project, is technically not open source hardware, despite all the claims that it is understandable by one person and is community driven. They do have a hardware section in their manuals, but that only explains the ping out of various ports on the motherboard, but not the circuit of the motherboard itself. Second is that I use the component library from the Omega project for my video circuitry because it has the V9938VDB. If you go in the KiCad folder of my repository, you will see two lib files that start with Omega, and they are taken from the Omega MSX computer project, which is licensed under the GPL 3.0 license. I don't quite know how GPL works for hardware, but I think this is the right thing to do. And the third is that I want more people to see the progress of this project. I understand that a lot of people will look at my YouTube channel and say, okay, this project is probably just long dead. But in fact, although I do take breaks from this project from time to time, sometimes for a week, this project has proven to be very strong and it survived more deadly technical blows than any of my other projects. But that means the design is constantly being changed as the bugs are being ironed out that result in a long development cycle. So I figured if people can see the green dots popping up on my GitHub page, they'll be reassured that the project is still going on. And the last one is that I understand there will still be a lot of bugs due to the special design of the circuit. However, I'm also a strong believer of the Linux's law of given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. And to illustrate the last two points, I want to give you a little bit of an example. Remember the RS flip-flop in the original video about the Z80 protector mode? This is what it looks like now. It has now ballooned to a total of 5D flip-flops. Why such complexity, you may ask? Well, because the devil is in the timings. In the original video, I basically glossed over all the timing requirements and assumed that all the timings will work out. However, in electrical engineering, that assumption is basically like assuming all cows are absolute smooth spheres. And let me tell you, this circuit is still buggy, but I'm going to leave it as a challenge for the viewers to figure out what bug it has. If you spot the bug, that will make the hack enter system mode or kernel mode when it shouldn't, please leave that in the comment section below. Now, that bug has been addressed, but if you find other bugs, you can open an issue in the repository. If you have any questions, ideas, or suggestions for the hack, please join our Discord community using the link in the description below. If you want to support the development of the hack, you can do so via Patreon. Or you can just subscribe to this channel for more updates on the project. Talking about updates, I have a plan for future videos. I'm planning to do a series of small short videos about the, all the bugs that I found in the design process of the hack and how I solved them. I think this will help the bug finding process because I know putting a sketchmatic out there but with a little bit of documentation is not going to help that much. And I think this video series will help people understand like the design so that they can understand what each part of the circuit is doing or more precisely what they should be doing. And I think it will help explain why the project has taken so long because some of those bugs are really bizarre and mind-blowing. They're usually the types of hardware and timing issues you will just not find in any other Z80 based systems. But I also think that the process of finding and dealing with those bugs is a large chunk of the fun of the hack because a large chunk of the hack is clever circuit design and how to hack around hardware limitations, right? And finally, I understand many of my viewers come from a hardware background instead of a software background. 
And what I found out on YouTube is that the video that attracts hardware fans are usually troubleshooting or repair videos like those made by Adrian's digital basement. However, I cannot make those because I don't have the space, the equipment or the time to make those videos. So troubleshooting an ongoing design is probably the best thing I have. But that wrap it up for this video. I'm Andy and I will see you in the next one. Bye!